Have you ever found your dream home signed on the dotted line only to discover hidden nightmares that led to endless repairs and a bottomless money pit? Or perhaps you're on the selling end and your perfectly staged home hits a brick wall called the home inspection. Well, you're not alone. And that's why you can't afford to miss today's episode. Today, we delve deep into a subject that's the foundation of every real estate transaction. Yet, it's so often misunderstood and dreaded by both buyers and sellers alike, the home inspection. Whether you're in the process of buying or selling a home, you've probably heard of these inspections, but what are they really all about? What do home inspections actually entail? It's a minefield out there, but don't worry because we're here to provide you with all the answers that you need to know. Think of this episode as your personal guidebook, simplifying the complexities of home inspections and giving you practical advice. My name is Evelyn Lopez from the Evelyn Lopez Realty Team here in the Caledon and surrounding communities. And today we'll be joined by veteran home inspector, Steve Pocket of HMP Home Inspections. I've asked Steve to join us to shed some valuable tips and insights, and our goal is to empower you, whether you're a home buyer or a home seller, so you can approach home inspections with confidence and clarity. Understanding the home inspection process will help you avoid costly mistakes and maximize your real estate investment. So grab a cup of coffee and join us as we unravel the secrets of home inspections with Steve Pocket from HMP Home Inspections. Welcome Steve to the podcast and thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you, Evelyn. Uh, It's a pleasure to be here and look forward to uh, answering your questions and explaining the process of home inspection with you. Great. That's uh, fantastic. So before we begin, can you maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with the home inspections? Well, I spent most of my years in contract. Uh, my father had a construction business, and as a kid, I, I, I grew up working with him, uh, learning the trades. And uh, like I said, I spent most of my years on the tools. About 30 odd years ago, my father left the construction to pursue home inspection. I stayed on the, uh, the tools. I was still healthy enough and strong enough that I could keep going. And when my dad felt it was tired, he was tired and ready to retire, he asked me if it was a good time for me to come on board. And I'd uh, put a lot of punishment on my body, and I felt it was a good transition for me. So I, uh, I dived in and I took all the courses and uh, joined home inspection about 16, 17 years ago. That's excellent. So what exactly is a home inspection? A home inspection is a visual, unbiased inspection and report of the readily accessible systems and components in the house. So basically, we're looking at everything in the house visually without being technically exhaustive or intrusive to the home because it's still somebody else's home. Um, but we, we get as thorough as we can without crossing the line and have a good understanding of the home. Okay. So what type of things are usually covered in a home inspection and what type of things aren't covered in a home inspection? Basically, any major systems in the house, like your roofing, your structure, your heating, plumbing, insulation, interiors, any functional system or component in the house, permanent system to the house, is it's, it's part of a home inspection. Uh, so we're, you know, we're inspecting the condition of the shingles, life expectancies, uh, the plumbing, how they're performing. What's not part of a home inspection are accessory items and things that are outside, basically, the, the, the building envelope, um, like electronic components, like your Alexas and all these fancy gadgets and blinds and window coverings. Those are all um, accessory items and they're not really part of the permanent home and, and, and its components. Okay. And when someone has a home inspection, what does that process actually involve? Like what happens during a home inspection? So basically, if someone was to hire me for a home inspection, uh, we're all going to meet at the property. Uh, the realtor, the client will show up. Typically, I'm there before everybody else. I like to get there ahead of time, drive down the street, get the lay of the land, just have an understanding of what I think I might be coming into and may all already have done a, an exterior walk around the house. So that when, uh, when the client shows up, I greet them. I'm ready to go and guide them through and educate them about the house. Right. So that was my next question. Do, do the buyers actually actually attend the home inspection or is this something that you do without them? What do you prefer? Well, I strongly encourage the clients to be there. They don't have to be. I understand that there's foreign buyers and some sometimes there's commitments they, they can't make it, but I do prefer them to be there. I'm there to answer any questions they have. 
uh, they also see exactly what I'm doing for them. So, you know, they're, they're right behind me. They're over my shoulder. I do a lot of talking, a lot of educating. If they have any questions or concerns, I'm there to answer the questions. I find when this happens, it eliminates the call the next day from a client saying, hey, did you inspect this? Did you remember looking at that? When they're there, they know exactly what I did for them. Right. And I think it's also a good time for the buyer to go through the house because they're there for a couple of hours. And if they have any questions, they can ask you. And I know from being on inspections with you, you also give them tips on how to maintain the house moving forward. So from that perspective, I think it's very um, wise for the buyer to be there as well. Absolutely. When they when the buyer comes through, they're into the wow factor. You know, they're seeing, you know, the decor and the house might be staged. Now we're on a technical factor when we're doing the home inspection. Now we're seeing the meat and potatoes of everything and, you know, what's going to be functional and maybe not functional. And so how long does a home inspection typically last? It all depends on the size of the house, um, the complexity of the house and what's involved. Um, an average home inspection is two and a half hours. It can be a little bit longer. We have larger homes that you know have multiple systems in there, maybe a couple of HVAC systems. They definitely take longer. But um, a, a typical small detached house, you can anticipate two and a half hours. That's physically on site. And then um, I take time after that to complete the, the full report. So I know from some of the home inspections that I've been on, it seems like you have a process uh, that you go through when you're doing that home inspection. So you talked a little bit about starting from the outside of the house. Then when you come in, like maybe you can walk our listeners through what's kind of the steps of how you go through the property. Yeah, I do have a, a process and I like to stick to it because it's uh, it's a routine. And I don't like to step out of my routine if I can help it because because, you know, a routine just reminds me to do everything at a certain time. So we always start with the exterior of the house because that's your, your outside envelope. And, and we're making sure that there's nothing there that, you know, might have an impact on the interior. Like if I see missing shingles, okay, well, now we got to look in the attic and see how much damage has happened to the roof sheathing. Um, so I always look, even if it's a condominium townhouse where the, the condominium looks after the shell, basically the shell of the property, I still look at that because there could be something there could be impacting the inside of the house. There could be water damage that uh, maybe the condominium a corporation is not going to cover it. So I start on the outside, we get inside and I typically like to start on the upstairs of the house. We, we do the bedrooms and all the bathrooms and work my way down. I know some of them home inspectors like to start in the basement and work their way up. I like my way because I'm running all the plumbing as I go and we know gravity water will drop. By the time I get to the basement, if there's been leaking, like it did on this morning's inspection, um, the toilet was leaking, we found it in the basement. So that's my process. And um, you mentioned that you do this inspection and then you go, you go back and then you do a written report. So, yeah. So as we're going through, I'm talking with the clients. Um, my phone is in my hand. I'm taking lots of pictures and taking notes um, as we go through. They're kind of like jot notes. And, and that's already going into your report. After we completed the home inspection, they get a full PDF report. It's electronic and it gets emailed to them later that day. And what types of things are covered in that report? Um, basically, the, the, the 10 systems uh, of the house that we've looked at, so the roof, the structure, heating, electrical, plumbing, insulation, tiers, everything that's accessible in there, everything that, you know, we're running all the plumbing fixtures, um, flushing toilets, anything that gets used on a, on a day-to-day basis, we're inspecting. We do have some limitations. There's some things that we do not do, like main shutoff valve for the house. People have asked me, well, I want to know if that works. If that valve hasn't been touched in 10 or 20 years, there's a good chance that it might leak on me when I'm, when I'm trying to turn it off and on for them. Now I'm stuck with a leak. So we do have some limitations and I do explain that to the client that the reason why I'm not going to touch that valve today. And so Sometimes I am dealing with a a, a buyer and they're like, oh my gosh, the home inspection. I don't know whether I want to pay for that. But you know what? My Uncle Joe, he's a really handy man. He fixed his basement. He did this. He did that. I'm going to have my Uncle Joe come and and look at it because he's a handy, handy guy. So what differentiates you from that handy guy? (laughs) It's a professional set of eyes. So like I said, I was on the tools. My trade was framing, drywall finishing, um, but I didn't know anything about electrical. I didn't know anything about plumbing. We hired other trades to do that. As a home inspector, you're trained the, the basics of, uh, of all those fields and what to look for. Now, we're not necessarily professionals in all these, in these fields, but we are trained on how these systems are supposed to perform and what to look for. So you may have a guy that's done this finished basements, but does he know where to look for a venting system for plumbing? Is it properly vented? Maybe not. 
So professional eyes look for that stuff. Okay. Now, I also noticed that on some of the inspections, you may say to them, well, this house, for example, has got a deck out the back and the deck is so many feet off the ground. And I've heard you say, well, you know, according to the bylaws or the rules, this deck should have a railing around it. Or in some of the old, old century homes, the the spindle distance is so big that, you know, a kid could put their head through. And I've heard you say, you know what, this is now, there's a difference between back then and there's a difference between now so can maybe you talk a little bit about what that's all about yeah so so building practices and codes have changed and evolved over the years um sometimes when we inspect an older house you'll see like a, a, a railing going up the stairs and it's a lot shorter than what we have today and and some people say to me boy isn't that too short and i would say yes in today's standard it is if we're building that now because that's been there for 70 years it's grandfathered in nobody tells you you have to replace it i may express to them what the concern is that it is low in today's standards and if you want to change it that's discretionary to you um if i see a uh, safety feature like the spindles are far too wide and children can fall through, then I'll express my safety concern with that. You know, saying that was what was our building practice was back then. But for safety, you might be might want to be aware of what the concern is here. So are home inspectors regulated in the province of Ontario? No, we're not. And I wish we were. Um, they are regulated in Alberta and BC. Uh, they have been for quite some time. We've been lobbying it for, for a number of years. We're, we got very close uh, about four or five years ago. Our, our bill was put in place. Um, then our provincial government changed hands and the money, the spending stopped. But I really wish we were regulated because it just it paints a clear picture of the home inspection field and for people to have confidence of knowing who they're getting. Right. So technically, you know, that Uncle Joe, who's the handy guy, could tomorrow start his business as Uncle Joe's home inspection, but he really isn't qualified. So I know from having discussions with you and even seeing your 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 business card, you've got some letters and things behind your name. Can maybe you speak to that? Yeah. So there's, diff- there's different associations out there. You have the Ontario Association of Home Inspectors. You have CAPI, Canadian Association of Home Property Inspectors. That's who I'm a member of. I'm a registered home inspector. I have uh, the RHI designation. I also have the national designation. Those are pretty well considered the highest fields, uh, highest designations in our fields, which tells people who do their homework on home inspectors that we're at the highest level. So we maintain 20 education, continuing education credits every year. Um, Although we may know lots of things, there's always room for improvement. Practices are always changing and we need to keep keep up with changing times. So we're continuously trying to step up and bring ourselves to another level. Um, So when you're looking for a home inspector, you want somebody who's with a, an organization that's um, you know respected and and they actually inspect the inspectors. There's internet sites out there um, from the U.S. that nobody's regulating it and nobody's inspecting the inspectors. So you really need to be careful on who you go with. Um, seeing ads on Kijiji for cheap home inspections, you're going to get cheap results. And a home inspector like yourself with these associations, the RHI, are they um, carrying errors and emissions insurance? Are they are they insured for anything? Abs- they should be. To be an RHI, you have to carry E&O and business liability. Um, it's very expensive insurance, but I had it since day one. Um, and I do know there's home inspectors that don't pay for it. And those are the ones that are probably offering people a cheap home inspection because they're not protecting themselves and they're not protecting the consumer. Quite often when I get a phone call for somebody saying, how much is a home inspection? They just want to know how much it is. They haven't told me any information about the house or anything like that. So I ask the questions, let them know and know how much time it's going to need and what the cost is. And they say, and they say, well, thank you. I found somebody cheaper. My last comment to them is before we hang up is do yourself a favor and ask to see that inspector's insurance slip, a policy. Make sure you're protected because there's lots of people, lots of guys out there doing do, doing these inspections that don't care the insurance. And it's, like I said, it's consumer protection for the client and for the, for the home inspector. Right. I think that's really important because, like I said, kind of with my little scenario of Uncle Joe, because they don't want to spend the money and Uncle Joe's the handy guy, you, you get what you pay for, I think, in Absolutely. anything in life. And you have to know, you know, what you're getting. And so that's why I... 
invited you to speak to our listeners today to, to shed some light on it. So a home inspector isn't just someone who's going in. They've got some knowledge behind it, some certification. The fact that you give a written report, because I've also seen some inspectors that say, I'm not giving you a written report. So like it's he, sh- you know, like you find out there's some major thing and he never even checked it, right? And he's got no insurance to cover it. And then where are you? You're nowhere, right? This, this, the written report too, the written report too is, an, is a lot of valuable information about the house. So when you have your conversation with the insurance company, now you've closed up that, that deal, the insurance company is going to ask you a pile of questions. A lot of those questions will be answered in my report. So they can have the report next to them as they're having the conversation with the insurance company and have those questions answered. You know, like what type of plumbing systems, the age of the hot water tank, they're going to ask a lot of those questions and those, are, those answers are in my report. Right. Excellent. And so experience is always important. It's like if you were sick and you had to have brain surgery, you wouldn't want to have a doctor who's never done brain surgery before and they're going to do you as their first patient, right? So what type of experience do you have in and outside of home inspections that sets you apart? Well, I find my background in in contracting um, was a huge asset, I think, for me. Um, there's lots of people that, you know, they, they may have been in IT or driving a truck or something, and they just, you know, really like the, the sounds of being a home inspector, and they took the courses, and they will learn as they go. As they go. I just find my background, it's been, it was a big asset for me because I spent so much time in homes and renovating, and when people have a question, it could be a question maybe outside of what we're doing there. They want to maybe do an addition or something. A lot of times I can answer those questions on the spot without necessarily referring to further evaluation or further investigation. So I, I think my, my background is a big asset. I also, you know, I've, I've trained in, in other uh, fields as well in thermography, building science. So um, yeah, when it comes to experience, um, it helps. I know everybody's got to start somewhere, it, but uh, I was very fortunate. I mentored for a year under my father and uh, we had another home inspector with us who used to be the chief building inspector for the city of Brampton. I remember him. I can't (laughs) tell you how valuable he was to me. I spent a lot of time with Tom um, because there were lots of times where I knew something was wrong and I didn't want to go get the building code book. I would ask Tom. Tom knew everything. Up, you know, he just rhymed everything off. So he was a great asset for me in the early year. Mm-hmm. Yes, I remember Tom. So uh, you mentioned some different things that you are trained in, such as the infrared technology. I know you use drones. So can you maybe talk about some of those other tools that you use in the trade, what they do and how they benefit the consumer? So infrared thermal imaging, I actually have a camera right, right here. Okay, this is my infrared camera. It's by FLIR. Um, it is a very viable tool that's with me on every inspection. And that comes out at the end after we've run all the plumbing in the house. Um, I basically scan all the walls and ceilings and that helps me to determine if there's any missing insulation in walls or ceilings that, that we can't see visually. Um, it's very good at picking up plumbing leaks. If maybe somebody's had a leaky bathroom and they painted the ceiling. Well, after I run the cold water in those tubs, those stains will show up with the camera right away. So it's a very valuable tool. I've had that that camera now for about 11 years and it's it's just been a great asset. So I love my thermal camera. Uh, moisture meters, these are more floor technology here. These are great too for checking the walls in the basement, looking for high readings of moisture and humidity. The drones, so I got UAV certified about seven years ago. I went to uh, Waterloo Airport and I got my certification. So. In order to use drones for business, you have to have a commercial rating for it uh, and to be insured for it. So drones are great because um, sometimes you can't see all the angles of a roof, or sometimes I can't get on that roof. It's too high or or the pitch is too steep. Um, Drones are great because I can get right in there and and get all around all the angles and get all the pictures, and those pictures go right into the report and we review them. And if there's any voids, the, uh, the drone helps us. Right. And I know that you do not charge extra for those services. So I know a lot of inspectors don't have that. And a lot of the ones that do charge extra. And that's something that's all included in your price. So that's something that a consumer should ask for when they're asking for price too. What does your inspection include? Absolutely. When I when I bought that camera about 10, 11 years ago, the, the camera in the course was, camera was 9,000 and the course was 2,000 for thermography. So it was a big investment. 
and um, they were promoting people to charge an extra two hundred dollars. And there were home inspectors who were saying, "Well, if you want thermal, it's an extra two hundred. I never charged a cent from day one. The moment the word got out that that camera was on every inspection for the same price, my business basically doubled that year. I just, it was just such a great asset to the business. Now I know sometimes when you are doing a home inspection or a person is buying a house and it has a wood burning fireplace. Uh, some of the rules have changed in terms of that, uh, in terms of getting a wet certification. And the home buyer will often need that in order to get insurance for the property. And they need insurance for the property so that they can get their mortgage. <laughs> they need their mortgage so they can actually buy it. So can you maybe talk a little bit about wet certifications and uh, if you are wet certified and what that means? So wet, wet or wet certification, um, the word certification is kind of, um, it's misused. There really isn't a certificate. It's, it's a wet inspection, but there's people just kind of have their calling it a certificate. So it, it stands for wood energy technical transfer. So anything that's wood burning appliance in the house, the insurance companies are very sensitive to wood burning and they want to be protected and they want to make sure that these components are safe. So I got myself wet certified about 10 years ago um, for inspecting uh, site inspections, level one, visual wet inspections. So that if we come to a home inspection and there is a, a wood appliance, um, I can inspect them at the same time doing the home inspection. And basically it's looking at the systems, uh, the stoves, the fireplaces, the chimneys, the flues, and making sure that everything is in good working order and compliant to the wet standards. And I give them a, I give the clients a separate report for that to pass to the insurance company. Because most of the times insurance companies, like I said, they want they want their money, they want to be protected. They'll um, they'll ask for it. So I do standalones. I have people calling me all the time saying, well, they've changed insurance companies. And it's, they are getting a great rate from this new insurance company. Now that new insurance provider says, oh, you have a fireplace, we want that inspected. So I do go out and do uh, separate wet inspections. But if you're if it, if, if you need a wet inspection on the home inspection, the, the wet inspection is deeply discounted because I'm already there doing the home inspection. Now, I also note, uh, since we're talking about home insurance, that sometimes you'll go through the house and you'll point out things like, like you said, that maybe they should do. But sometimes you'll also point out things that they have that will give them a reduction on their insurance that they might not have otherwise known about. Uh, maybe you can give us a couple of examples of those. I would say like a, a backflow preventer, a sewage backflow preventer. That's definitely one that the insurance company always asks and honestly i only see them in about five percent of homes they are new in newer homes now becoming more standard um it's basically a box near the uh, in the basement the front of the house where the plumbing is exiting and it's and it's a it's a mechanism that guards against any back pressure of sewage coming in a gate will come down and hopefully prevent that basement from a, uh, a sewage back backup so when i see that i put it in the report and i it's written in my report make sure you tell your insurance company because they do offer discounts for things like these things that you've done to make the house better and safer they'll, they'll We'll give you a discount for it. Yeah, because I have heard you mention that on a few of the inspections that we've been on, and I was like, okay, what's that? <laughs> so I yeah, always so learn they're, something they're, new. <laughs> uh, they, they are pricey to put in. They're about they're probably twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars to install, but it's also insurance too, right? It for it may avoid an insurance claim, and it may save those prized possessions you have in the basement. <laughs> so what are some of the special circumstances that might come up in a home inspection? So things like, you know, irrigation systems, water purification systems, pools, hot tubs. Do you cover those types of inspections or would they have to get a separate ins inspection for those types of uh so those, those components are considered outside the scope of a home inspection. So we're, they're, they're not in the modules of the, the, the systems to the house, hot tubs and, and pools and that. So we basically will say, you know, you should have a professional pool company uh, come in and, and look at the pool because, you know, they can do sonar testing for leaks in the lines, the, the backwashing, they'll check the pressure. Um, there's all kinds of things they can do. If I'm on site, I will walk around a pool if I see co like, you know, pretty obvious coping issues uh, or cracked concrete decking and stuff like that. Um, I'll make my comments but i'll also put in a limitation that you should take it further and have a proper pool company come in uh, same with hot tubs irrigation systems we're not running an irrigation system there's so many systems out there i'm not playing around with their program just for the homeowner to come at home and say you want to come and reset my my irrigation system for me so typically when we see an irrigation system i say to the clients maybe on one of your scheduled visits before closing you can schedule with the homeowner to be here and they can show you how they use the irrigation system okay so the systems that you would cover is you would check the electrical panel 
anything that was that was that was pertained to the to the house the original house so all the electrical systems the panel the plugs the uh receptacle gfis the, the electrical systems all the plumbing systems supply drains the attic the insulation the r value the ventilation um furnace the furnace the hvac heating and air conditioning we check to see how it's performing um filters where's the filter how often does it need to be changed are there any hrv heat recovery ventilators how they need to be maintained and how they work Work. Those are all common components and elements to the house. And things like uh, water softeners, would that be? Water softeners, we typically say there's a water softener on site, but we're not, we don't like to run a generation be, because it could run for a while. And we don't like to leave these things running when we, when we finish the house. So we mentioned, like we look inside with, you know, it, it has salt, it's this clean water and there's not stagnant water. So it looks like it's performing. Um, but I do say when it comes to appliances and stuff like that, those things are, are considered appliances. Home inspectors generally don't cover appliances. It's written in, in the, in the um, agreements that it's, it's outside the standard of practice. Now, we, when we're there, we'll turn stoves on, elements on, and we'll say they're running here. But keep in mind, I'll say to the client, they're using these appliances for the next three months until you get your keys. Anything can fail. So you have to do your part. When you get your keys on closing day, run every appliance. You have until midnight of that day of closing day to notify the lawyer if any of these appliances are not in good working order if it was written in your purchase agreement. They cannot wait to the next day. I emphasize that verbally to them and it's in my report saying. Mm -hmm. That's a really good tip. <clears throat> now, typically when we think about home inspectors, we think about the buyer doing the home inspection. You've just bought a new home. You want to make sure that what you're buying is good and the buyer does the home inspection. But home inspections can also be performed by by the home seller. So a home seller may want to do a home inspection for a few different reasons. So one of them is uh, in the markets where home homeowners are holding offers. So they're holding offers for a certain date and they're hoping to have multiple offers and they're hoping to have firm offers. So sometimes the buyers will go, wait, I, you know, I'm okay financially and everything, but how do I know this home is really good? So I will often say to that home seller that you know, doing a pre-listing inspection would be one way to be able to provide some information to the buyer so that they feel comfortable moving forward and not necessarily having to do their own home inspection. It's good for home sellers to have a pre-listing inspection for, I guess, you to let them know if there's anything in the house that's deficient that would come up in a home inspection. It's better to deal with it in advance than at the table or after the offer's gone in and now the home inspect or the sell sorry, the buyer has done their inspection, they've found something and they're making it a big deal and they're wanting a huge reduction in price and you're having to renegotiate or possibly even and lose your offer. So that's another circumstance that would be very beneficial to a home seller to have a home inspection. Do you perform pre-listing inspections and how are they the same or different from a regular home inspection that we've been talking about? So the answer is yes, I do them. They become very popular in the last three or four years, especially in our competitive market. Uh, market with uh, bidding wars. They really don't differ from a pre-purchase to a pre-listing. It is the same inspection. The only difference is I'm not, I don't have a, a buyer with me um, educating them, but I still go in there and do my same job, same inspection, same written report. If that report is being used to offer to a potential buyer, they're going to base their decision on my report. So it is the same inspection. They are beneficial, like I said, in multiple offers in competition. You have some nervous buyers that say, well, you know, there's, there's a few offers on the table. They're only going to take firm offers. I'm not comfortable going in without a home inspection. If you have a home inspection from a reputable home inspector or company to offer, maybe these people have some confidence now going in because they've seen something. It also gives the seller uh, an opportunity that if some issues did come up, they may say, well, there's a few things here we can tackle that's not going to be a big deal for us, but we can clean it up a little bit just to make it look less congested for these people. So there's always the opportunity to do that and, um, you know, prove to me that they made some changes or like if they changed some GFIs, you know, we can we can modify the report if we need be. But, but basically it's, it'll, it'll offer the, the, the buyers a peace of mind. And like you said, to people trying to negotiate, we, we know that it happens sometimes. People come in there and they'll start throwing things out, trying to get money down when you have an inspection report that says something different and then the conversation will be had with what's going on here so 
Yeah, it is. They are, I, I'm doing them every week. So they are very popular. What are some of the red flags or things that would make a buyer say, I got to make sure that I'm checking this out? Maybe you can give us some examples of that. So I, I think, you know, the buyer should have a, maybe a conversation with the insurance company or their lender. Because, you know, like I said, they get involved nowadays. Like lenders now want to know if they just Kitech, you know, in the, in the property. So Kitech was a type of plumbing that has a history of failure. So insurance companies and, and, and lending institutions are, are uh, sensitive to that. It's wiring issues, electrical issues, anything that could be hazardous, like mold and stuff like that. Um, those, those are the big ticket items. But it, it, as scary as it sounds, I always say to people, you know, like there's always a solution. So when I, when I go into a house and I say, oh boy, we've seen this, we've seen this, we've seen this. I always try to find the solution for them. You know, like if we find, say, vermiculite insulation, which, you know, it doesn't necessarily have asbestos, it can be tested. And if it does have asbestos, well, there's, there's options there that, you know, if you negotiate, you can have that remedied and still get the house that you want. But you just had the power, the tools now to, to negotiate. So when someone is uh, looking for a home inspection and they're trying to price out the cost of it, we talked about there's a difference between someone who's trained and has some, some certification as opposed to someone who doesn't, someone who carries errors and emissions insurance. But what other factors would come into play uh, in, in price? Like, so in other words, if it's a small little 500 square foot condo, is it the same price as a 3,000 square foot bungalow with a finished walkout basement? No, not at all. Like, like you know, that's just, it's all about time and what's involved. Obviously, the larger the house, the more involved. The, the, the more systems in the house, more involved. Um, and are there any fireplaces? And extra things that, that's not in it typical house. So I, I ask all these questions. So I do get people call and say, how much for home inspection? Well, I said, well, hold on. Let's find out a little bit more about the house. I need to know this. Was well, it detached? Okay. Is it detached? Is there a basement apartment? Right. So it's going to be more systems down there. So there's lots of questions to ask before I, I, I give that price. And once you've done the home inspection, you usually do a verbal report or verbal comments as you're going through. And then I know you do kind of a summary at the end. And then you go and you do the preparation of the written report. How long long does it normally take for the home buyer to receive that report? It depends on that day. They will receive it by the end of that day. So it was morning or afternoon, they will receive it the same day. So basically, we'll have that conversation out on the driveway. So verbally, they'll, they'll know what to expect on that report. And we've already had discussions in the house. So we'll just, we'll just kind of recap what's going to be in there. And they'll have that physical Okay, PDF so they're not waiting two or three days day. down the road to get the, the, the report. No, no, no. I I typically try to do, if I don't have another inspection right away after the next one, I, tr I try to do that report right away. For me, I get everything flushed out of my head on that house, done, it's sent off, and now my mind is wide open for the next house. So what are some of the common um, issues that you find in a home uh, that maybe buyers as they're going through houses, what are some things that they themselves should look at? So I'm thinking, for example, a common one I see is in the mass master bedroom en suite, they will often have like a shower with the a drywall around the opening. And a lot of times you'll see, you know, wet on the, the drywall, it's been damaged, it's, uh, you know, it's been compromised, I guess is the word. So what are some of the typical things that a buyer should look at when they're going through the house? Obvious, obvious water damage. So look at the ceilings, especially if there's a, another level up top and there's bathrooms up there. Look at the stucco ceiling. Does it look like it's been patched? Okay. Uh, has, has there been any plumbing issues there? So look for, for water damage. Water damage is probably the most important. Um, how they been, you know, has it been neglected? Did they let the water stain for a long time? I think you can tell a lot from, from the condition of the house if they've been keeping up, the people be keeping up with the house. Um, uh, yeah, so water damage is probably the biggest thing. And, and look for the MacGyvers of electrical and stuff like that, like the, D, the DYIs. Um, you know, there might be a few things that might set the antennas off and say, boy, we need to get a home inspector in here. What are some of the things that a home seller can do to prepare for a home inspection on their home? Great question. And I wish, <laughs> I wish people would ask this, if they can clear the space for the attic, that's my biggest peeve is when I've got to take everybody's belongings out of their closet to get into an attic. I particularly don't like to interact with people's personal possessions. But I have to take out clothes and stuff that's piled up on the shelf because I have to get myself up and check that attic space. And I really wish the agents uh, would tell the clients to prepare the attic for me. That would be a, I would like that. <laughs>
that would that would help me a lot. Um, and then just make space for the electrical panel. You know, I've had people put freezers up against you know against the electrical panel. I got to move a freezer. Um, we don't like to move furniture. Um, I don't remember. It's a visual inspection. We don't like to move their stuff because there's always a risk of something happening. You know, I don't want to move a credenza across the floor and have a scratch in the floor. So we. We want, you know, it'd be nice if these things can be prepared for us. Right. So you would want the attic right space cleared, the electrical space cleared, the space around the furnace to be accessible as well. Should they do things like change the filters before you come? Sure, they can. Yeah, if there's a clean filter in there, well, it shows me that, hey, they're maintaining it. If I see a filter, it looks like it's been changed in the years. It kind of sets me off. Okay, let's find out what else they're not, they're neglecting in here. So they can help themselves by doing their, their, you know, doing their, their own maintenance. Okay. Their and what is the one piece of advice that you would give uh, to our listeners in regards to home inspection? Don't skip it. <laughs> don't skip it. Yeah. Just don't, don't skip the home inspection. I, I know when we went through those times with COVID and in these multiple offers, I had a lot of inspections. We call them post-closing inspections where people bought, they closed and they call and say, come and tell me what I bought. For the most part, things work out and I help them out and try and prioritize their list. But there were a couple of nightmares where people were having a hard time getting insurance because they didn't have enough amperage in the house. They had maybe aluminum wiring that some insurance companies don't like or, you know, um, plumbing issues, um, you know, knob and two wiring, stuff like that. So um, don't skip the inspection and inspect your inspector. So, Steve, uh, what areas do you cover around the Toronto GTA? I'm all over Halton Peel. So um, I, I, I currently live in, in Caledon. Um, I spent many years in Georgetown. I grew up in Brampton. Um, I do basically from Hamilton to Etobicoke. I do a lot of rural property up in, in Wellington County and up through there, lots of rural properties. Um, I'm, so I'm, I'm covered all through there. I do have a, a colleague that I trained six years ago. Uh, and he will cover okay. it from Hamilton. Now, I know you've done inspections for me before because I'm kind of in that West GTA, but I also do areas like in Alliston, Innisfil, and I know that you've done some inspections for me there. So you do that area as well, or, or are you just doing it because I ask you? All through there, Alliston, yeah, Guelph, Alliston, Orangeville. Yesterday I was in Arthur and Dundalk. I was up north yesterday, and uh, this morning I was in uh, Mississauga and Burlington. So I'm, I'm all over And the how far in advance does someone typically need to book you for a home inspection? I know that's hard because usually you're putting, you're usually doing your offer and then it's conditional on a home inspection, you know, three to five business days. So I guess as soon as they know that they have the offer accepted. As, as soon as they know. Yeah. L last week was a very challenging week. I had realtors calling me saying they're in competition and they're asking for 24 hour inspection clause. Well, one day I had four people ask for that, and it's it's very challenging. You, you all of a sudden you might have four people trying to book you, or you have nothing. So it's 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 a challenging time right now. Is it's it's a competitive market. So, but it it comes and goes. It's not always like that. But um, yeah, as much as much time as possible. You know, you might call and say, "Can you do something tomorrow?" Well, I actually have tomorrow afternoon. But if you know, if you call me three three to five days ahead, that's even and better. what is the best way for our listeners to contact you if they have any questions or they want to book a home inspection? So they can call or text me. A lot of times if I'm on a home inspection, I won't answer the, the phone. I'll have a message that goes out saying, I'm sorry with a client. I'll get back to you shortly. So calling or texting or uh, email or go to my website, hmphomeinspections.com. And there's a link there to book. Okay. And the best number to call or text inspection. is? 416-824-8380. Well, thank you so much, Steve, for joining us today and really shedding a lot of light and insights on the home inspection process. And again, I know I've used you for years. Uh, you do a really good job and I thank you for your time. Okay. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.